And I'm going to read Psalms 46. As a matter of fact, excuse me, I would encourage you to read Psalms 46, Psalms 47, and Psalms 48 together. Those three Psalms, they kind of go together prophetically. Most of you have probably heard some of the verses from these Psalms. Psalms 46, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Verse four, there is a river. That's what I'm going to talk about today. There is a river. The streams uh, whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the most high. God is in the midst of her. He shall, she shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early, the heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow. He cutteth the spear in sunder and burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So Psalms 46 is really a tremendous psalm that has been read for generations about God being our refuge, our strength. Uh, though things are shaking and mountains are removing and kingdoms are being removed, uh, God promises us that he'll be with us in the midst of this shaking. Uh, but this, this chapter is very interesting because in the midst of this shaking, this removing, uh, mountains being removed are symbols of kingdoms, uh, symbols of authorities and powers that are being shaken and removing. In the midst of this psalm, God begins to talk about a river. It almost it seems as if the river doesn't really belong in the psalm. But verse uh, three, say, verse four rather says, there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the most high. So I thought that very interesting that in the midst of all this shaking, in the midst of mountains being removed, in the midst of fear and trouble and wars, being uh, God causing wars to cease and end, um, God begins to talk about a river. And why is that so important to us today? Well, many of you know that the river of God is one of my favorite subjects. And um, if you've not read the new book I've written called I Am Zion, I'm still encouraging you to get a copy of this book because there is a river in Zion and the river of God, of course, Jesus talked about it in John 7 when he said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. John saw it in the book of Revelation as a river flowing from the throne of God. And so the river of God, Ezekiel saw it in his vision. It's a picture of the moving of the Holy Spirit, uh, the picture of the flow of the Spirit of God. So we're going to talk about the importance of being spirit-filled, being spirit-filled during times of trouble. Let me say that again. The importance of being spirit-filled during times of trouble. You know, being spirit-filled is not just for a church service. It's not just speaking in tongues and prophesying and having some gifts of the Spirit manifest in a church service. No, the gifts of the Spirit and the river of God is something that should always flow from your life, especially during a time of trouble. We need the Spirit of God we need the river of God. We need the, the flow of the spirit of God. We need the wisdom of God, life, understanding, knowledge, freedom, liberty, praise, joy, whatever, whatever we need during a time of trouble. We definitely need it during a time of trouble. And there are a lot of people that are afraid now. They don't know what to do. They don't know what's coming, not only health wise, but economic wise. Our leaders really are doing the best they know how. We need leaders that are full of God's wisdom because they've never dealt with anything like this before. And I've never seen anything like this before in all the years of my life. But one thing I do know that in the midst of trouble, God promised to be with us. 
And he said, though the mountains be removed and be carried in the midst of the sea. In other words, though there be a great shaking. Um, one of the reasons why I like, I like studying this subject is because I've learned in studying the scriptures that when you read about the rule of God, the reign of God, the dominion of God, that God often establishes his rule, reign, and dominion in the midst of trouble. As a matter of fact, before the rule, reign, dominion, kingdom of God is established, God often, he does have to shake old systems. He shakes old government systems, economic systems, systems of sin, whether it's called Babylon, whether it's called Egypt, Sodom, whatever it's called, uh, one of the ways that God establishes his kingdom is by removing the old. And it's often during a time of trouble. So often when we see days of trouble, um, it's not something to become afraid of. It's not something to panic and throw in the towel. It's really the result of the prayers of God's people for many years of the removing of that which is wicked, ungodly, unjust, unrighteous, and God shaking it. And in the midst of God, is God establishing his rule. So if you read Psalms 47, it begins to talk about clapping your hands, all you people, shouting unto God with the voice of triumph. It begins to talk about the rule and reign of God coming. And then Psalms 48 talks about Zion, the, the city of God, the mountain of God, the stronghold of God, the, the rule and reign of God. So it's really a progression here. Psalms 46 talks about something being removed. Psalms 47 talks about praise and worshiping God because God's kingdom and rule is being established. And then Psalms 48 talks about the establishment of Zion, the city of God, the rule of God, the reign of God, the mountain of God, the river of God. <clears throat> there is a river. And he talks about it again in Psalms 48. There is a river. The streams of thereof make glad the city of God. And so God continues to talk about um, uh, this river. Um, he talks about it in, in Psalms uh, 46. We, we mentioned that. Uh, and then he talks about <clears throat> the river of God flowing in the midst of the city, in the midst of Zion. And so I want to talk about that because often when we're going through situations, it's, it's very important uh, to let the spirit of God flow in your life. Now, whether that's dreams, visions, prayer, intercession, tongues, interpretation, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, whether that's prophecy, whether that's the flow of the peace of God, the, 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 the shalom of God, the wisdom of God, this is when we need the river of God to flow. The river of God is not a flow just for a church service. And remember now, we're not able to have a physical gathering in most places. So the river of God doesn't stop flowing because we stop having a physical gathering. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. It's the flow of the spirit of God. It's really what makes a difference between a spirit-filled believer who's depending on the spirit of God and the flow of the river of God during a time of trouble and those who do not have the spirit of God. Those who do not have the spirit of God often are full of fear, panic, they're afraid. They don't know what to do. They're confused. But those who do have the river of God and those who do experience the flow of the Holy Ghost, they're the ones that will experience the peace of God, the shalom of God, the, the wisdom of God, the power of God, the anointing of God, the joy of the Lord, the gladness of God. These are things that should flow even now in the midst of this <clears throat> virus, in the midst of this sickness, in the midst of this great shaking across the world, um, in the midst of all of this trouble, God says, I'll be with you. And one of the ways that God is with us is through the Holy Spirit. That's the way that God inhabits us, dwells in us, lives in us uh, through his river, his peace, his river flows in our lives. And so God has promised to be with us. And this is when we worship, if we have to do it at home, pray in tongues, uh, pray with interpretation, prophesy, flow in words of wisdom. Let the peace of God, the glory of God, the grace of God flow in your life. Let that river flow out of your belly. So don't limit, don't limit the river to a church service. We're not in church services now. We can't experience physical gatherings now. But you have the river of God 
that flows out of your belly. You are a temple of God. You are the city of God. You are Zion. You are Zion. Zion is a corporate group of people, but individually we are Zion. Zion is where the mountain of God, the city of God, the river of God, the dominion of God, the power of God, the fortress of God, the habitation of God, the presence of God, the glory of God, the, the, the wisdom of God. All of that is in Zion, the place of God's glory, light, excellence, favor. Psalm 60, arise, shine, for your light is coming. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And so we're learning our identity is more than just a church service. Our identity is in Christ. We are Zion. What does that mean? Though all the mountains in Psalms 46 are removed, cast into the sea, there's one mountain that stands strong that can never be removed. And that's Zion because it is God's mountain. It is a place whose foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Uh, it is a place of stability, a place of righteousness, a place that cannot be overthrown. It is a place that is eternal from generation to generation. It's everlasting. It is a place of the rule and reign of God. And that's who you are. That's who I am individually. We are Zion. So I'm encouraging people to get a revelation of Zion because when you understand Zion, you can see everything falling apart around you. You can see systems, governments, economies, health systems falling apart, but you remain the same because you are a mountain. You are the mountain of God. And in that mountain flows a river, the river of God, which brings peace and joy and victory and celebration and dancing and rejoicing and glory and anointing and presence and favor. That's the river of God. Jesus said it will flow out of your belly. John chapter seven, Ezekiel saw the river flowing. Uh, John the Baptist saw the river flowing wherever it, wherever it went. It brought healing to the nations. How much more do we need this river today? Because on each side of the river were trees for the healing of the nations. And that's exactly what the nations are looking for now. 